The Wedding Feelers Podcast. Listen to our podcast. The buffet's closed. We're smaller clothes. Okay, right, here we are. This is episode 16 of the Wedding Thinners podcast. Uh, I hope you're all keeping very, very safe and well out there. Um, we are actually uh, a couple of days away from a, an announcement from Bojo about what we can do next. So I don't know about anybody else that might be listening or my two guests, whether you're keeping everything crossed uh, just to go outside and see somebody. You know, yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, I'm pretty sure we're not going to get to the stage of uh, being able to have hundreds and hundreds of people crammed into a small room uh, to to dance and sing their hearts out just yet but hopefully uh there'll be some i think they say light at the end of the tunnel but anyway enough about that enough about the crappy stuff um we have two amazing guests uh, joining us uh, this evening um we have the very very talented tori allen martin say hi tori hello there's tori <laughs> And we also have uh, the fabulous Yvonne Park, who I'm going to also refer to throughout the uh, podcast as Vonne. Um, so say hi, to, please, Yvonne. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you both doing? You all good? Yes. yes. Good. Thank you. And yourself? Yeah. We're all good. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'm sitting in an office in a, um, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. It's pretty cool, actually. A bit of uh, yeah. yeah. It's nice to be here. It, it feels nice like to... we've got company. Yeah. So I'm I'm better now that I'm. <laughs> Now that I can see you, Especially. although I must admit, it's really weird because normally um, when I have guests, because we're doing this via Zoom again for anybody that's listening, when we normally do um, these sort of remote session things, we don't, I don't normally be staring, wouldn't normally be staring at the laptop. Um, so, so I find it a little bit off-putting to have to sort of look down at the camera <laughs> all the time. So if at any point I'm not looking at you, it's because I'm, I'm just sort of talking um, random crap yeah. most of the time. Um, but yeah, I very, very much appreciate both of you uh, joining us um, to have a chat. Um, you, you're, well, you've both got a wealth of talent, uh, musically, uh, writing, we've got, we've got acting, we've got all sorts in the bag tonight. So um, I'm looking forward to sort of chatting to you and getting through it. So can we start with you, um, Yvonne, if that's all right? Yeah. So Yvonne, just tell us a little bit about you. Um, who are you? What do you do? Uh, why are you here? Why did I, you know, how do I know you? That, let's go along that lines as well. Well, we know each other from the music industry. We do. And uh, yeah, uh, we worked together many, many times um, singing. And yeah, that's what I do. I'm a singer. So I have been singing from, I'm going to say what everyone always says, some, from when I was really little, you know, I started off in church, um, singing in the church choir, which led me to kind of studying music and then becoming a backing vocalist, which is what I do. And then I also started as an artist um, a couple of years ago, releasing my own music. So that's kind of like a quick summary of yeah. my life. <laughs> that's good. I like that. Very succinct and to the point. Well done. Thank you. Uh, and Tori, what about you? Yes, same. I started as a singer as well, like like you both. Um, and just kind of literally accidentally kind of fell into, always loved all things creative and just kind of, you know, something goes wrong. So you try another thing um, and ended up, uh, I've always done acting like loving it but I've ended up doing lots of telly lots of theatre and I also write I'm um, I'm a co-founder of Burn Bright which is an organization to support platform and champion women and women identifying writers do a bit of directing jack of all trades master of some <laughs> Nice. We always say, oh, I think I've said on, on multiple uh, podcasts now, many, many pies, because that yeah. seems to be the running theme for um, people within the music industry is that they sort of, they have to have, uh, you know, other things that they can be doing. Um, and I suppose uh, the situation we find ourselves in now is, uh, is absolutely testament to that fact, you know, we have to have other, other means of earning a bit of dollar. Um, yeah. Otherwise, it all goes a bit wrong, doesn't it? So, um <laughs> I mean, how how's um, the current situation impacted on you? Because I know Yvonne, you, you know, you've been right. You, you write as well, though, right? You say you're yeah, just a singer, but I mean, you're a, a, a very, very uh, prolific writer of music. You, you produce. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, the stuff that I've, I've been listening to of your EP, um, like I said a moment ago, prior to us uh, starting the recording, um, you know, it's got that. I mean, who would you say your, your music is inspired by? It's a mix of people. So I think... I first kind of was inspired by soul music. So like Shaka Khan, <laughs> Anita Baker. Um, and then it kind of went into the neo soul, you know, kind of genre, um, Erica Badu, Jill Scott. So just a lot of R&B soul influence and neo soul. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I get 
like my writing style from. Mm. No, very cool. Okay. And, and, and actually you're not alone. As Tori said, you know, Tori, you, you have sung before as well and you you've got a new ep coming out soon which is that's a world exclusive we're going to get that in several times today um but what about you tori because you know you know you're a singer as well as uh, obviously acting as well who are your influences as a who are your influences as a singer and a writer it was growing up it was like ella fitzgerald i used to just sing her like that that it's like 20 songs it starts with manhattan essential ella I used to come home every day after school and just like and practice vibrato. Like mm. I think that I was I'm obsessed with tone. We spoke about that, didn't we? Yeah, we did, Tom? yeah. And um, I, yeah, it was just that. And then I used to listen to like TLC, Tony Braxton. Nice. So when I got into musical theatre, I was a nightmare because they want you to belt up there, and I was like, no, 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 no. like I wanted all the low bits, and no one cared. So I spent years and years perfecting this low register that nobody wanted. So basically, if they sing low, I probably love them. Okay. My, that seems pretty cool voice. to me. And uh, yeah. and you know the people you mentioned in there was it Ella? What a voice! Yeah, she's a just voice. a dream. And like yeah. Donny Hathaway, just Donny. Donny's one of my. They favorites. don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> No, they don't. Donnie's my, Donnie's my, yeah, like literally Donnie all day. Donnie and Stevie Wonder for me all day. Um, yeah. And it's funny, the reason I laugh when you said Shaka Khan, Yvonne, was because I've just been listening to, um, oh God, oh, I played it to my kids actually for the first time today, I Feel For You. Um, oh, just yeah. like, just epic, Gorgeous. isn't it? The whole way through. Um, so yeah, I've had a bit of a Shaka day today and the boys were, I was, absolutely love the fact that both of my little boys were sitting in the back just dancing away just bopping so like, yep this is good this is education you don't need school just so stay here stay home with us um but yeah that's really cool um okay so uh, both musicians um both got new eps out in the way did you say you got a new ep of honor have i made that oh no it's a new single new single, new single yeah. On the way. yeah and your new single is called yeah. won't hold you yes it yeah is. okay cool so when's that out so it's coming out i'm not going to give an exact date but why are you being in a couple of months, it's oh, on its way. I'm oh. going to drop a few hints on Instagram. So <laughs> everyone just has to keep their eye out for it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll do that. And anything you want to share with us on our Instagram, feel free to do so as well. That'd be, that'd be awesome. And we will be happy to listen to it. You know, if you want to give us a sneak peek beforehand, yeah, that'd be good. Course. Yeah. And you're going to do a couple of tunes for us uh, tonight. I say going to do, um, <laughs> we're going to, you're going to send me a couple of audio files and we're going to drop them into yeah. the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> So but we're, we're it will feel that. like a, a kind of like a live at home experience in a way. Everything yeah. is so different now, isn't it? Like absolutely so many virtual gigs and shows online. <laughs> Have you done any virtual gigs, Yvonne? I've done um I've done a BBC radio kind of um live lounge okay. from home kind of. Uh, did you? Um with a, a singer and she's a musical theatre artist, um Mar Marisha Wallace. Right. So oh, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. She is incredible. So just mm. before, the day before we went into lockdown, she played at the Jazz Cafe. So that was like our last gig of last year. Then Radio 2 was our first gig of this year. So <laughs> kind Mad. of she's the last person I've been working with. What's that sort of mid-March sort of time was your last last live gig? Uh, oh, what's that? When, what was that? Your last live gig was before the beginning of the first lockdown? No, uh, just last year. So the, uh, oh. the beginning of this lockdown. Oh, this one. Lockdown yeah. three. Yeah, it's lockdown <laughs> Can't three. Can't keep up, can you? Which one are we in? <laughs> oh, lost. That's pretty cool, though. That's very, very cool. All right. Yeah, well, you, you got some, um, and, you, and you got some stuff coming up with her again, or? Um, not that I know of. So mm. I think just because of COVID, it's kind of like they might say something and then it doesn't happen. So yeah. I'm kind of playing it by ear. So yeah. Just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah. yeah. And how are you keeping? How are you keeping busy? So um. So I mean, there's a lot of recording stuff. That's one of the I think the great things about having already having a home set up from before is that now you can kind of use it to get some work and get some money. Um. So I've been kind of doing that recording from home and uh, just still writing. Uh, work. I'm working with a uh, hospital records and they're like a drum and bass record label. Um, and yeah, just doing, just putting your foot in like different doors. Mm. Honestly, you have to just find ways. Absolutely, mate. Got to keep it. Uh, I think it's important to keep busy from a mental health point of view as well. I don't know yeah. about you two, but well, actually, Tori, we did say, you know, like we have to be busy. Um, otherwise, it just yeah. feels like the whole world's coming down, particularly for me anyway. So, <laughs> no, and um, 
Tori, you've got um, you've got Hear Me Raw, um, which is a, a, an online event again um, associated with Burn Bright, which we'll talk about Burn Bright a little bit more uh, later on. But Hear Me Raw is an online event, um, 22nd of March. Tell us a little bit about that. It's uh, we commissioned seven badass uh, women writer actors to write three to five minute pieces. Uh, we never want to be too prescriptive about what they what our writers write because we're really interested in their voice. So we just said like things you wish you'd said, <laughs> things you know now. Uh, yeah, just just blow the roof off and let rip and roar and go for it just a safe space to be dangerous and say whatever is driving you mad or, or making you smile, like, you know, what, whatever the vibe is for them. So we don't know too much about it, but we just know they're phenomenally talented women all with very different styles, very different voices. They're a diverse group of women. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. And then I'm, I'm hosting and I'm also gonna interview Mal uh, Morgan Lloyd Malcolm, who wrote Amelia. She's a wonderful playwright who's really championed Burn Bright from the beginning. Um, yeah, so it's just a really nice evening celebrating women and women's voices. And it's happening, I think, sort of like the, it's around the anniversary of the first lockdown. It's like the day before or something. So it feels like quite a quite nice kind of, yeah, just like what a year. And I think <laughs> everyone has so much to say. So I'm really excited about what's going to come out. And we, we have voices that are a bit more kind of spoken wordy and we've got, um, a girl who's very like working class northern who like will say whatever she feels i'm just i'm so excited about it and i i hope it will just make people feel really seen and heard because i think it's always refreshing to see people being just authentically them i think yeah. it's being really normal being normal good. is important yeah. And yeah, actually, just, if it's uh, the like nearing the anniversary of the first lockdown, it's like the, the name's perfect as well, isn't it? Hear me yeah. roar. It's like an opportunity to just finally get it out there. That's know, what we want. Unload. <laughs> yeah. You let it all hang out. <laughs> Uglier the better. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Burn Bright. Because, I mean, um, up until we spoke the other day, I'd never heard of it. Um, I didn't know much about it. But it sounds like um you and your is it uh, sarah your is your partner yeah, sarah you Henley, yeah. so you, you you're onto something with regards to really enforcing a positive or trying to spread the message of positive change for um for women writers or those who identify as women as well so tell us a little bit more about it like the how it where where did it originate from initially <laughs> so i know that i know this by the way i, know, I mean you go as, oh, as far into yeah. it as you want to yeah. <laughs> let's not do anything that will libel anybody i suppose yeah i can't i that's the thing sarah if sarah was here she's always like at me because yeah. i'm a bit cool well i'll be I, sarah I, then I like... yeah you be sarah i'm the one that wants to roar all the time but um nobody needs a lawsuit in a pandemic when well, we have people no can money we're not not to uh to knock um the severity of what's happened but obviously obviously people can find out for themselves if they visit yeah. your website the backstory yeah um, via but... our website the story's there but basically long story short our our work was we were erased from a project uh, that we'd worked on for four years we wrote a play um commissioned to do so it had a workshop at the dominion theater and then it was announced uh, without our names on it um <laughs> so the show the name we'd given it the poster was you know as and our names went on it and that's literally like how we pretty much found out that that was happening because we thought we were still on the projects but we weren't um so we, no, we but yeah it was crazy so we battled for ages to try and I mean, even not to, it wasn't even an ego thing. We were like, fine, if you want to kick us off it, but like, can we just get some credit for the work we did? Can we, you know, just the whole thing just felt so unfair. So battled it, battled it, it went to lawyers. But the thing is the people involved were very, very high profile. And, you know, often justice is only justice if you can pay for it. And yeah, we I was can, saying, if you've got the finances, yeah. you, can, you can battle it, can't you? Exactly, and we didn't. So I'd I'd gone to the parties involved um, before it all got really big and I basically said to them, look, we'll drop everything if you'd be willing to work with us to create something that will prevent this happening mm -hmm. again. Right. And we felt very much as kind of up and coming writers and as women, we felt very unprotected. We didn't feel welcome in a lot of spaces we didn't have all we weren't mates with the gatekeepers we just felt really lost and we were like how do we protect this from happening and how do we be the change we want to see and we asked them to come in on us with that and they wouldn't 
So we literally could not pay our legal fees. <laughs> And we were like, we're going to have to go public. Loads of people said we'll go public. But I was like, I don't want to go public unless it's for a positive reason. I don't just want to like sell my story. Like, what's yeah. that? So we just did a post, which is still available on the website on Medium. Like, so it wasn't a money thing. We went interviewed. We just told our story. We shared pictures. We said, you know, we shared proof. And we just said we need to raise money for our legal fees. <laughs> So if, if anyone can help, it's embarrassing, but that's literally the situation that we're in. And we want to set up something to stop this happening. And we were working with the Writers Guild at the time, you know, it was all above board. And then we ended up raising like 15 grand. People wow. were just amazing and so much more supportive than we ever thought. And I think sadly, because it has happened to so many people, like we've had so many messages from people who've been through the same, similar. Um, but then we were like, oh, God, we can actually do something like really amazing with this with this money. So we we Burn Bright was born in the lockdown in the first lockdown. So we right. were like, well, let's get on with it. So we have a time bank initiative where you can get free time with industry experts. So like producers will be on there, writers for telly, directors, whatever you need, legal advice, therapy sessions. Um, then we have obviously the live events that we do. Um, we've got like resources on there we do all sorts of things then we do connect sessions with industry insiders much like this chat we're having but you can come along and ask questions and and it's yeah so far it's gone really well and we've given loads of writers their first commissions we've themed the different nights so we did um a, an event that was focused on black talent uh, around the time of black lives matter we did a northern event to profile northern voices um where we partnered with regional theaters so yeah we've got a real focus on getting a range of voices out there and making sure that those people tell their stories, not the stories that we're so often forced to tell. Yeah. Like if as a black writer, they're often like, tell the trauma. It's like, I don't want to tell the trauma. I want to mm. tell a love story today, yeah. you know? <laughs> so we want it to be a space that's open. Um, so we're just so excited to get it in real life. But yeah, the support's been amazing. And we've we've helped like, I should have written down the figures, but it's like 130 hours of free time or something to up and coming writers. and. Yeah, so that's burn bright. Sorry to waffle on, but no, 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 that's good. No, I think you did very well to hold yourself back, <laughs> given the history of it as well. Yeah, uh, exactly. and I also want to say, you know, um, that in this instance, it seems like you know something incredible has come out of something that's you know not so incredible mm. uh, and pretty shit, if I'm honest. Um, mm. And that's uh, you know that's the um, you know the erasing of your existence when it comes to the, the you know the the what you'd created um yeah. but also the fact that you've done this throughout lockdown as well you know the fact that you've brought something that to the forefront uh, that's important to you and, and has helped so many people um so that's incredible and it, yeah. again like we said before you know to have something creative to do um keeps your mind active doesn't it so oh yeah and even just our weekly sessions tara finney this uh, amazing producer helps us with it and just the three of us meeting every week to, yeah. to, to catch up and chat about it has been like a lifeline in yeah. half half the time we do about 10 minutes on like what we should be talking about and then that's your social hour, that's a bit of social time for you isn't yeah but it? That, like, like an hour of it is just one of us crying normally like <laughs> i can't do this <laughs> the other two picking up but luckily so far there's been quite a good rotation so like two of us are a bit <laughs> all right yeah. and can pick up the other one but uh -huh. if there's every day when we all i mean let's see after this bojo announcement we might all three of us be on the <laughs> Another, well i'm on the edge i mean you know i'm genuinely you know it could be me i am the world's most emotional man according to my wife my wife now looks at me uh, any in any moment in a tv show where she thinks i might cry she just does this and she's looking <laughs> for me to, are you crying at that there was something about chris eubank last night and uh chris eubank cried and she just looked immediately at me like, you're looking at me because so yeah no i think um did you so cry no i didn't oh. so, yeah get me and ordinarily i think i would have because I was a bit like, oh, Chris Eubank, you know, he's beat people up for yeah. a living. Um, he's double hard, but apparently not. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's quite amusing, I suppose. Um, the whole Zoom thing as well. I, I, well, the Zoom quiz was good for about a week, um, you know, and, and until everybody got bored of the, the Zoom quizzes that they might have been doing with their family and friends. But actually just to sit, it was bizarre, but just to sit looking at other human beings uh, and to chat to them has been absolutely amazing and really you helpful. know when you yeah really helpful imagine yeah. if we didn't have any of this what's that Vaughn? I did a sip and paint birthday party the other day on zoom sip and paint and it was 
it was really like incredible. So they had like a teacher and she was like teaching. I actually got the paint. I'm not trying to show off, but I've got my painting right now. Oh, oh yeah, oh, whatever. Yeah, as if it you was, did that. Well, this so one here framed doing. behind me, I did that as well. Yeah. <laughs> you did it though, did you? <laughs> No. <laughs> no, Zoom has changed everything. Can we see it again? That was good. Your sky is really quite special there. Thank you. Yeah. That's lovely. That's lovely. What, so do you like drink and paint? What's the... Yeah. So everyone just has to like, you bring your own drink and kind of turn up. There was even like a DJ, like at the end. Sit right. and paint. Great. Everyone is in their house and the DJ's in his house, like playing music. It was it was fun, honestly. Oh, and my birthday cool. is in March, and I'm just like, if lockdown doesn't happen, yeah, it's gonna to have to be home. like a house party, um, clubhouse party situation. Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, uh, when's your when's your birthday in March? Twenty fifth. <gasps> At least you're that end. Oh, oh that's oh, Aries. Yeah. We should do it the joint thing, <laughs> right? <can't we? laughs> I could be painting. I've got a shit ton of decorating to do, so I could just just get crack on with that with a bit of music. Literally in the background. paint, yeah. Yeah, I thought that's what you meant for a minute. I don't know why. I just had visions of everyone having a drink and sort of rolling up and down the wall. You know, no. That way. no, that looks great. And what were you inspired by with that image? Not that anyone can see this. So we're talking about something that nobody's going to see apart from it's us. It's a very pretty sort of sunset image, right? On water yeah. with a yeah. boat and a couple in it. Just it makes me think of um, North, like the North, not North Korea. Um, well, like <laughs> Vietnam. <laughs> you know, like the, the, the Vietnam, um, the water and the rocks and stuff. Don't yeah, lots of yellows, oranges. Feels like sunset. Exactly. Yeah, sunset kind of, it's kind of relaxing. It like is. you kind of wish you were on a beach looking at I that kind of orange kind of sunset. Oh, that would be so nice. Should we do yeah, a Mary yeah. Poppins and jump into it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on. I'll be Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> See how this podcast doesn't really follow any sort of structure. Uh, and we just great. it's on a tangent. Um, we should say at this moment as well, Tori, you've you've got a podcast. Have I made that up? I've read yeah, but I have a podcast. There you go. You yeah. know more about See? my company. tenuous link. Do you see? And that's kind of why good. I said it. No, thank you. You're good. Um, you. Have you? How many have you done? It's not that we it's just, competition that I'm going to be like. Well, I've done sixteen. We're um, but, nowhere near you, babe. So you're all right. Wow. We've just done one, which is a chat uh, between me and Sarah, who right. set up Brand Bright, and then our. We've got Morganoid Malcolm coming on again. The playwright Anna Jordan, an amazing writer, and more to be, to be announced. Confirmed imminently very good yeah. well uh li listen you know feel free to share we've got an instagram and we'll share and you know mutual yeah, we'll sharing share. now, i heard i way. heard of something that they called a share cast um uh, somebody who might be coming and doing a share i've never heard of it before but it's where basically you have someone who has a podcast already and they like and another person does a podcast and they basically do their podcast at the same time uh, but interview each other so it's like the podcast that the other guy does is basically your podcast as well anyway um yeah so you could do a share cast with somebody cool. if you wanted to yeah, yeah. Just top tip tom's top Thank tip you. we'll put a little bit of a um <laughs> little jingle there tom yeah you need a jingle yeah it's, it's coming don't worry um, i'm proud I uh, think uh, so. Um, Burn Bright sounds fantastic, and people can uh, obviously get in touch. They can find out more by visiting your website, um, which I believe is burnbright.co.uk. I think it's org. Org. Okay. Well, just burnbright.org.uk. Okay. Uh, if I if that's wrong, Sarah will kill me. But I'm pretty sure it's org.uk because I always think, isn't that weird? That it's an org. Mm. <laughs> that's my own thought. Mm. But, but Burn Bright. If you Google Burn Bright, it say, comes yeah. up a hundred percent. Do a bit of googling, and you're yeah. there. Yeah, so I won't. I don't need to tell you. You just find it. <laughs> Sorry, what did you what? say, about? What's the process for like the the women that you choose um, who get to perform? How so do we you kind do. Of yeah, we do open submissions usually. So oh, sometimes right. there's writers that we know that we approach directly because we're really inspired by them and excited by them. But we keep it as open as possible and we don't like, we feel, because we're writers as well, you know, when you've got these schemes and you have to write 15 mm -hmm. pages and all, we're like, no, we don't yeah. want all that. So we just say, send us like three pages of something that you've done. Right. Um, we want it to be just like minimum time and effort. Yeah. And then, so for like this one, we, I went through all the self tapes and we just favorite people. There's loads, we found, we find so many people all the time. So yeah, we keep it really open and we, our emails are always open. We just are right. always on the lookout for new. Right talent so if you know anyone or you want to write it please just send it our way <laughs> no just in case like people want to get involved but don't know if you know maybe they feel like they're too 
not like at that point yet where they could do something like that but yeah no they are get involved then at least they know it's an open solution. yeah no right. thank you yeah it's totally open and you don't need an agent or yeah there's like yeah. the zero red tape we're just interested in Talent. voices yeah, yeah. That's amazing. creativity oh, very you. very good i like yeah. it very much and uh you know it's a really good way of inspiring you know youngsters to get involved as well if they know that you know they don't need to have that uh huge amount of training behind them and they don't have to have experience which is so often chucked in there isn't it well exactly in the class system but, like it's yeah. hard for people and you well, sometimes just need that first step don't you and it yeah. can feel possible to get there when all well, of the, well, the kids i teach you know uh, you know i teach uh, up to 18 and there's so many of them are like oh, i really want to do this and i was like cool well you need to get in touch with these people and they often these people that they're getting in touch with will say you know you need experience and it's like it's a vicious circle because well how do i get experience when i'm not being yeah. given the chance exactly um, yeah, so i know that young uh, young people leaving and trying to get into the industry um find it very very frustrating but yeah thank you for doing it on their behalf as well mate I think that's Thanks. an important yeah, thing. Yeah, our doors are open. Come on in. <laughs> Come in. You're going to get so many emails now <laughs> from all the youths that listen to yes. this podcast. I mean, so just give me time, though, because it's literally only me because Sarah's just had a baby. So, like, it's only me going to all of these emails. Wow. So just be patient, gang, but come on in. And we do loads of, like, cheap or free learning and stuff as well. So, you know, if you oh, want to cool. learn more, oh, the okay. doors are open too for, for women, women identifying people. Sounds good. Um, so Yvonne, um, you've done some uh, some pretty cool stuff with regards to your backing vocals. I know we'll talk about you as a as a, an originals artist, but um, you know you've done some pretty cool stuff with you know with, with other artists as well. So talk to me a little bit about the who's. Yeah. Do a bit of name dropping, basically. So then I can <laughs> then I can tag them on Instagram. <laughs> well, um, so I mean, from uni, kind of started left uni and. You went to ACM, didn't you? Somehow. Yeah, I went to ACM. Yeah. Um, and just luckily, I just connected with, um, I was writing with this musical director and just by chance, because we had never worked together that day. So until then, um, and he was just like, you know what? Actually, there's an audition tomorrow for Emily Sunday. Do you want to, do you want to go? It's like, wow. So you were never going to tell me unless you, until you heard I was good. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I yeah. So that's kind of kind of how my journey started. Um, you you hear the, about the audition, you kind of go, or someone hears you sing, and you get recommended for the next one. So I kind of started um, with Emily Sande. I did a little summer run with her, and from there I started working with Mabel, and I worked with her for about four years, and then recently I've just done two tours with Kano. Mm. Um, which were amazing. So th th that was kind of my last lockdown kind of tour. Um, and then I've worked with an Italian artist called Marco Mengoni, who um, he won X Factor in Italy. And he does these massive arena tours, which I'd never done before, never even thought I'd get the chance. Um, and that was quite an experience because I'm singing in Italian, which is, oh, which is right. strange because I can't speak Italian. <laughs> 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 So <laughs> that was really weird when I got the call, like, do you want to come and audition for this Italian artist? I was like, okay, where? See, si. like, that's Milan. all you needed to say. Like, <laughs> so you Milan. went out to Milan and did the audition? <laughs> yeah. Nice. I was like, okay, well, sure, I'll try because why not? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Italian, worst right? case, you get a trip to Milan. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> it was, yeah, so I went for the audition um, and it went well. It was, yeah, it went well. And I've been working with him as well for, uh, for about four years. That's um, amazing. Thank you. It's, Did you find it's it hard to learn the Italian or like, was it quite easy or? I mean, it was, at first it was hard and like, but I kind of, you listen and kind of just kind of match the, the words with like yeah. what you think it would be or just you listen to the track. Um, mm. I kind of just me memorize and it's like memory muscle, you know? Um, yeah. And then it's that good old musical yeah. ear kicking in, isn't it? Trying to hear it. <laughs> exactly. It's like all the technical stuff you learn at uni, all that money you paid, you know, to learn these things. Then now's the time to use it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's kind of how my kind of backing vocal journey has gone. So well, do you know what you're do you know what you're singing now, though? As in, do you understand what the uh, the lyrical content is? For, for some for the songs that I've learned already. Yes, I do. But when there's a new album. No. It's kind of starting again. And because there's always like a little one year, two year gap right. um, in between the tours, I kind of have to like 
do my homework again. But which can is you really speak good. Italian now, though? Like, I wonder if you're. No. Oh, I, I mean, wonder if you find it easier. Bella. <laughs> uh, cappuccino, <laughs> per favore. <laughs> but you might find it easier now, though, because you've got those, you know, those those words in your in your yeah. memory bank, I suppose. That I might, understand might it better than I can speak it. So right. if I am yeah. in Italy and I'm hearing a conversation, I can pick up some things and I kind yeah. of guess that okay they're talking about this yeah but it was very hard at first on, on the very first tour because um not a lot of them spoke English so yeah. um it was kind of like not being able to socialize and you know connect with all mm. of the musicians and in the band um but it was still a great learning experience and now it's like well I get the jokes I'm like in with the gang so <laughs> You know, it's fun. And I'm just like, I can't wait to, you know, see my Italian family again. Yes. I <laughs> love it. The Italian like, language is amazing. Culture. It's so amazing. Yeah. And it, uh, like, Italy fun. itself is one of my favorite places in the world. But Me so too. love that language because it's so musical. You know, yeah. it's, just, it's sort of up and down. Isn't it? It's very melodic. It just sort of flows yeah. from one place to the other. And what I love about the first time I went to Italy and I, I could, I'd started to learn a bit on the plane um, and, uh, I'm like you, I, you know, I haven't got a clue. I'm there sort of going, I, at least I can get a cappuccino and a beer and I'm all right. Um, but I just, yeah, I remember watching, I was with a friend who could speak Italian and we were at a bar, we were having a drink, watching these guys chat. And they, they were so animated and they were so loud and it was so passionate and it was so, you know, to look at them, you'd think, wow. And I said to, to Josh, I was like, are they having an argument? He's like, no, they're just talking about what they've been doing. You know, it was sort of, <laughs> really just in your face stuff that we'd be like, all right, chill out. But yeah, they're just yeah. talking about their day-to-day -day life. You know, couldn't get yeah. the bus. And, Honestly, know. there was a conversation um, at one of, when I was having lunch with a couple members of the band and they were really like expressive and I was wondering what's what's going on like what happened so I, I just had to cut their conversation like what happened what's going on they're like oh this guy from the mob they caught him and I was like oh okay yeah. <laughs> right because yeah. I it sounded like they were arguing but they were just like Passionate. in shock yeah oh. <laughs> so yeah the language is very it's like it's you said expressive. like sounds and it's interesting I love yeah. it yeah I love it as well. It's brilliant. Hey, listen, um, you know, we're, we're here obviously talking about what we're doing and what we've got planned and what we, uh, you know, what we have on the table at the moment. But, you know, the podcast, um, as well as those things out, you know, the Wedding Thinners podcast is something to uh, to sort of share the idea of, of sharing those tough moments, if you like, and things mm -hmm. that are things that we find difficult. And anyone that's been listening before knows that for me, um, it sort of comes from a place of, uh, of eating and weight loss and stuff like that. So there's a question that recurs um, throughout, uh, and I'm going to ask you and, and see see how you both handle it. Basically, um, I'm going to ask it. Why not? Uh, Do what's it. Your, what's your relationship like with food? Is is my question to both of you, uh, and you can choose who goes first. I don't mind. I'll go first. Sure. Go. Do it. <laughs> um. So I love food. I love <laughs> food too much. <laughs> That's so funny because there's so many people who go, I love food. <laughs> That's the starter for many, many people. I love oh. it. Who doesn't? I mean, who doesn't love food? Yeah. Um, but the relationship is messed up. It's it's too, like, yeah. So I kind of grew up kind of very skinny, um, very skinny and not really eating a lot of food until I got to secondary school and just – it was kind of like a daily ritual in, at lunchtime to go to the shops and just buy all the snacks. That's what my friends would do. So I kind of started like copying and just, cause that's where you socialize. We're going to the mm. shops. Okay, I have to go and kind of join in. So that was kind of when food became like, not really, I guess for nutrition, it was like more indulgement. Um, and then it's like got to uni and the freedom of just having money, first of all, and just, not wanting to cook because I right. just wasn't there yet. Um, so it was just always like takeaways, always getting a takeaway or two um, during uni life. And, but it wasn't that bad. And then got home and having to transition from living like alone or with friends back into a family and kind of having people tell you what to do kind of, cause you're under your parents' roof. So it's not really the same freedom that you once had. So I feel like, that kind of played a part in kind of like, I'm not saying, not not exact, just trying to find something to kind of get through it. And food was like my best friend. 
<laughs> food was kind of the thing that okay this brings me comfort um so it wasn't it's not a great relationship with food that I was having um and I think it just kept getting worse and worse over the years and I've just I put on a lot of weight I put on a lot of weight and I was just like this this I don't recognize myself um I don't really understand why I've kind of just not taking care of my body I don't it's it's not it not it's not even about food as well. It's just like, I don't take vitamins. I don't exercise. I'm not fit. You know, it's, it's other things as well that add to it. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it hasn't been great, but the pandemic has slightly changed things for me. Right. I don't know if it's because uh, I've been alone with my thoughts and there's mm. just not much to do. So you just kind of have to think. Yeah. Um, I've just kind of had a change in the way I see food now and, um the way like my body feels so just before we went um into lockdown I just realized that even when it comes to singing it was affecting how I sing right it was affecting how I perform and that's Mm. when I was like this is really an issue now because it's messing with work and I'm underperforming and I need to do something about it how was it how was it impacting on your singing mate so just a lot of like no like no like breath I can't yeah. hold notes longer right. anymore yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's just it's almost embarrassing like when you when you're doing well and then suddenly you're like people are like whoa Yvonne what's going on you mm. know it's just what's like changed? I want to yeah you want to be growing I don't really want to stay stagnant so um yeah it was just that's kind of the whole thing <laughs> so now I've kind of lost some weight um cool. how, have you done, have well. you, how, how have you done that with Slimming World yeah, with Slimming oh, World. Cool. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's been good, like having a virtual group to go to every week and seeing people struggle and then yeah. seeing people on their highs as well and just yeah. seeing that it's all, it's all right when that happens not to get into like a like a sad kind of state. Um, and it's a journey. It's, it's really, really a journey, um, which is what I've learned. And I'm just learning how to <laughs> eat better, and yeah. still indulge when I want to. Yeah. But How do you feel when you it? indulge though? Because for me, like I had a real funky moment, like not in a good way. I like, mm. <laughs> like two or three weeks ago, I was like, Oh, like it's just not working for me. Yeah. And I, I am such a terrible sulk when it comes to things not going my way, not, not necessarily to anybody, but myself, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I sort of sulk in my head about the fact I was not working. And so, you know, I'll just be a bit miserable um, for a bit. And like, there were so many positives that I could take from it, which I've mentioned in previous podcasts, so I won't bore people again, but I, I, I find it really hard to acknowledge the good things that I have achieved um, mm-hmm. it, with regards to my fitness, with regards to weight loss, with regards to like even my attitude to food, yeah. but with the, you know, like I've lost nearly three stone. I, you know, I, I do regular PT sessions now. Uh, I'm more active than I've ever been before. You know, I've got muscles in, you know, in my arms. I didn't know that existed, you know, (laughs) and, um, you know, I I certainly feel a lot better, but I, when I, when I'm not losing weight, when that number doesn't go down, that's Mm -hmm. a problem for me. And, um, it's only, but I'm good with it now because what I've started to learn and started to realize is that every other aspect of my health and my lifestyle in terms of my health has changed for the better. Mm. Uh, And it might be that, you know, I do weights and I box as part of my regime to keep fit. I love boxing. It's so, it's so technical and it's such a skill, (laughs) much like singing. You've got to, you've got to really knuckle down and learn your moves and learn your scales. And, you know, you've got to dodge that. Otherwise you're going to get punched in the face. So it's a really good (laughs) way of getting fit. Um, But yeah, it's only very recently that, I've started to not ignore the scales, but not worry if those scales aren't dropping quite so mm-hmm. much. And I was just seeing it staying at the same or going up or going up. I did a, a, a walk for charity in January with a friend of mine who's um, who's been on one of our podcasts as well. And, you know, he and I were walking something like 50, 60 miles a week. Uh, we, our aim was to walk 400 miles in January for War Child. And, um, you know, I was drinking loads of water. I was active. I was walking six seven miles a day um and I'd, I'd regularly put on weight and it was a moment like like first week okay maybe it's just the, you know residual stuff from the previous week I can live with that the next week it went up again I was like it's starting to frustrate me but okay cool whatever drink a bit more water that's what I should do drink more water and then it kept on climbing and it got to the third week I was like no 
toys were firmly out of the pram and I was having a proper sulk about it. But yeah, I think it, the number is such a weird thing, isn't it? Like yeah. as in that weight uh, can either make or break your week for me. And I wonder how that is for you. Like whether when you jump on the scales for your virtual meetings, do you have the fear? Uh, the worst is when you weigh yourself at home and then you go there and weigh yourself on their scales. Oh, don't even get me And it's two different things. I'm wow. just like, no, yeah. no. no. <laughs> I'm not having it. I'm not having These it. These scales are broken, Amazon. I keep sending them back. I keep coming back with the same old shit. Yeah. I mean, but really and truly, I think when I look in the mirror and I feel, and I'm, I'm like happy with what I see. Yeah. I'm not at my goal weight, but I'm happy with where I am. And that's more important to me. Like, okay, yeah. I'm feeling better about myself. And you can see it in how I behave, you know, towards my family and my friends and I'm out the house more, you know? Yeah. So I think those things yeah. start, you know, it's important that you're showing, like it's helping you come out your shell more, you know, and, yeah. and you're happier, you're more happier than before, rather than it being, uh, you know, I'm not, at, this is like higher today. It was, you know, lower last week, but it doesn't really matter for me, I think, um, mm -hmm. as long as I'm, I'm happy and I'm, you know, I've got the goal in mind. That's what's important. I yeah, think. I had a very interesting chat <clears throat> the other day. Um, again, somebody who uh, who's the guy who I box with, who has been a previous guest. And he's hugely inspirational to me. He's such an intelligent and, in and knowledgeable guy. And, and Elliot, um, yeah, you know, he's he's brilliant. And he kind of knows, because we've trained together so much now, he knows when I'm in a funk, just by the way I text him. You know, we're just chatting and stuff like that. And he, and basically, I got um, I got a text the other day saying you you can have the, uh, the this vaccination, and I was like, cool at first, and then immediately afterwards, I was like, wait, hang on, what? Why? <laughs> and then it's like, oh, okay, I mean, I'm in this this category apparently that I didn't know I was in. So it was kind of like I'm really pleased on the one hand that I'm going to have this vaccination whenever, uh, but on the other hand, I'm really like. But I'm in this category now. And he he was just like, mate, just stop thinking about it. Like, don't think <laughs> about that num don't he said, just yeah. just learn to love. That's what he said, which was brilliant. Learn to love the the you know what you're doing and the journey that you're on, if you like. Yeah. Learn to love exercise, learn to love how you eat and change that bit of it. Don't worry about the number, you know, just exactly. learn to love and get that, just get yeah. that instilled in what you do every day. Yeah, um, and there's like rugby players who are like peak oh. fitness in the morbidly obese category like muscle weighs so much more so like where you were saying like it was going up or down half it could be that where you said you've well, got yeah, muscles you never absolutely. had that weighs more it's like hormonal if you're eating loads of vegetables you retain more water like i did it this week and i was like i've been i've had such a good week and then i put on a pound and I was furious. And I was texting my mom and I was like, this, this, but, and I went off on one. And then I was like, but it's the same thing. I can sit here and tell you. But to me, I was like, I'm getting back yep. in bed. I'm exactly I'm the same. Yeah. yeah. And it will make you go, I'm going to have that packet of crisps. Exactly. <laughs> it makes you want to quit. But I was like, no, just keep going. And then the next day I'd lost like two pounds, which goes yeah. to show none of that's true. Like well, that, I don't, I don't know what I weigh. Yeah. It's somewhere within that. Well, they've all said, but, and again, like you've just said, like, I just don't, I, I, I acknowledge they're saying it, but I just don't hear it in yeah. that sense, you know? Uh, and that's such a strange feeling, isn't it? Because I think I'm intelligent enough to sort of, and I would be saying exactly the same to someone else. Mm. Yeah. But you're not taking into account all of this good stuff. Yeah. But I'm then the one sitting the other side going, oh, moaning and you know, <laughs> bitching about the fact that I've not lost any weight. It's just utterly ridiculous where that comes from. And that's partly what baffles me about this whole thing for me is like, why am I like this when mm. I know that I'm doing all this? Stuff? Like, where, where does that come from? But that's just yeah. me, I think, isn't it? That's just what it is. I think it is childhood and stuff as well. Like, I remember being weighed at school and them telling me there when I was like six that I was overweight. And then just the shame of going yeah. back in and people being like, what did you weigh? What did you? And I was already the only brown kid. I was already like the only fat kid. I, I only had one parent come pick me up. My grandparents, you know, I was, the, I was the weirdo. And then I was like, oh, great. And now I'm fat as well. This is all <laughs> I need. So I think, it, you know, so much of our stuff is childhood trauma. And it, I think so much of it probably comes from like being weighed as a kid and feeling mm -hmm. other or feeling this. And, and it, it, I think I feel like it's getting less now, but I feel like as I grew up, I would read like Heat magazine and they tell you what people weighed. How could they know that? But I remember seeing articles that was like, Scarlett Johansson weighs this and Julia Roberts weighs this. And I was always 
way more than everyone and it like i think it gets drilled i think it's yeah. all when we're younger and then yeah. we don't we just bury it rather than mm -hmm. deal with it and then it comes out in all these bizarre ways i mm. see for me i can't there's no recollection of anything happening i don't remember anything like that from my childhood you know um i had a great childhood i'm very fortunate i don't know that there are some who have you know dreadful childhoods um so i can't pinpoint one thing particularly mm -hmm. um but uh, yeah that's what baffles me even more really there, there seems yeah. to be no reason but i think it must there be there will this is what, be though well that's there what i mean this is what i'm learning yeah. now it must be just that sulk i really feel it's that you know i've there have been times in the past where my friends will say you know when i was younger and i was in a band and i'd get you know the odd beard up knobhead going oh look at that fat bloke at the door singing away and i'd be like well, just told me back i want to go and punch him in the face um not that i would but it would make me rageful to the point that i'd be really cross it really just ruined my night um and it, that came from a place of i wouldn't dream of saying that to anybody that's yeah. what frustrated me more and i guess maybe things like that over the over a course of time but yeah i'm certainly learning that there's a there's a little um little sulk in there every now and then so just ignore that and i quite like the idea of yeah, the scales are there. I'm going to jump on them tomorrow and they might have gone up and what, but I've exercised, yeah. you know, I've done a lot of walking this week. I've, you yeah. know, I'm active with, with the kids at home, half term holiday, um, whatever. I'm healthier. <laughs> that the is the, the main day. thing. Yeah. yeah. You're actually doing it like, and that's I, amazing. And it, like, I know, and I did um, verbalize this um, in my slimming world group. I, it comes I, sometimes I just, I'm worried about putting it all back on and losing all that effort and all that yeah. time. And I'm also on the cusp of three stone. That'd be nice to sort of knock that on the head. Um, that'd be really cool. But it is what it is. And it, um, yeah. it's fascinating to hear other human beings saying exactly the same thing as me. Because up until starting this whole thing, not necessarily the podcast, but this time round with my weight loss is the only time I've ever shared the fact that I'm doing it. And mm -hmm. to hear my mates say, yeah, I'm exactly the same. Maybe go, yeah. oh, okay, cool. And that's where this sort of idea of this podcast came about, really, to get people yeah. just sharing sharing their you know their tough stuff really um so tori um food for you similar sort of thing i know you've spoken about you know toys out the pram moments <laughs> i have a lot of them um <laughs> yeah i yeah similar obviously much like you guys love food friggin overly love it <laughs> i've got a toxic relationship with it um yeah i i feel at the moment actually i'm on a bit of a journey with it and and much like you said it's it's you both said it's it's not just a weight thing for me now it's health and you know i'm 34 now i want to live a long life and i'm like there's certain things i was doing that would would not contribute <laughs> helpfully to that by the way you sorry don't. you do not look 34 by the way just thank saying. you that's so crack face don't age <laughs> say. well i'm um, screwed then aren't i let's face it What's yeah you've got no hope babe. sorry <laughs> thanks um but yeah 34 um so yeah i just wanted to be a bit more responsible and i've always had a different difficult relationship with food um i used food for everything so not just comfort eating like if i was happy eat <laughs> sad eat stressed eat you know like everyone else would like be stressed and not eat and i was there with like four chocolate bars so um yeah just always struggled with it i ha i i think it all again sort of stemmed from like some childhood trauma and difficult times and i'd get through it by eating that was my th and my grandparents were scottish and like feeders and my granny had the fastest metabolism anyone's ever known so she could eat and just be fine and then would give me five biscuits and i was like a five-year-old a fat five-year-old what am i doing eating five biscuits like what but she's skipping around size eight like honestly if i could i love her dearly god rest her soul but if i could see her now i'd throttle her for that so um <laughs> i i think it kind of started there and then on off unhealthy relationships really i i'm definitely a binge eater and then all the guilt and shame comes in and then i'd go really restrictive how so, do you handle that guilt that guilt i mean now I mean, have you, have, yeah i was gonna say have you learned to because obviously i'm initially... getting there so during lockdown actually much like you have on same thing kind of stat you know with my thoughts sort of like i've got to face this because i saw unhealthy patterns creeping up again you know boredom binging and feeling sad and binging to numb it. Um, I started to look a bit more into intuitive eating 
and I found that really helpful. And I also found it helpful that initially it said, you know, you can't, when you're learning this stuff, you can't try and lose weight. Like you've kind of got to leave your weight to one side mm -hmm. because part of it is about if you have the binge, you can't restrict the next day. You have to eat normally and yeah. it aspired to be balanced the next day which was really hard for me because i guess the way i used to deal with the guilt and shame of a binge was then trying to just like restrict 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 for the next day or two so and i i really followed a lot of um body positive and influences and stuff like that i just and like fat influences and i just opened my mind a bit more i think and looked at different body types and listened to what different body types had to say and stopped my feed being flooded with kind of it used to be all like aspirational like skinny people that would make that i thought would make me go to the gym but i realized how much i you know i don't think any like most of us who worry about our weight especially those of us who are overweight and worry about it a lot of it is the shame aspect and the more someone shouts at you or tells you your shit and you're fat and you've got to change and it that's 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 not helpful that's not what we need we're not overeating because we're happy you know <laughs> like that's, well that's what so... bothers me that that bothers me a little bit about the fact every time and i think i said this to you on the phone about the whole you know there is an obesity pandemic you know and mm. it's like well yeah but let's do something about it rather than yeah. just labeling it something you know we, exactly there, there does need to be something done about it i think there and, are reasons that people are overeating and there are yeah. reasons people are punishing themselves with food so that was really helpful for me and i feel like i have a far more realistic view of bodies now i find all bodies beautiful and the first step for me now i am trying to lose weight but in a balanced healthy way but more importantly was i had to start trying to love myself at, at the size i was at any size yeah. because my weight will fluctuate i'm i'd like to have kids one day if i'm if i can yeah. my body will change then like i was like i've got to just fix these unhealthy behaviors and i'd been in quite a toxic relationship and i that broke down just before lockdown and looking back at it i realized how emotionally abusive it was and i definitely my eating crept up so much because of that and i put on probably about 20 pounds but I was eating to like, I knew stuff was wrong, but I didn't know what, cause I was being gassed it and I just ate and ate and ate. And then I found some of that behavior creeping up in lockdown when I was like processing it all. Um, but I'm sort of grateful for all of it. Cause I think it's all part of the journey and I don't berate myself anymore for having binge eaten or I've just feel sorry for that version of myself that was sad and was doing that to myself. But I, I, I hope I will be healthier now and I would like to lose weight, but I'd like to lose weight as a result of me treating my body better mm. and not abusing it with food. Yeah. Um, and that's the journey I feel like I'm finally on, but it has taken 34 years. It's literally within the past like, month that I'm like, I actually think I'm cracking it and I feel healthy. That's but it's, on, it's been about a year of like research, reading. Finding what's right for you. Yeah, not yeah. doing it by dieting, but doing it by by, by trying to just accept that, it, yeah, it's a, as you said, it's a journey. And yeah. we've got to just keep on it and be nice to ourselves. We'd yeah. never talk to our friends how we talk to ourselves, would we? <laughs> no. But imagine if we're, I've, the stuff I do, like be me going to you like, oh, you're well fat, get on the gym. Why are you eating that, you minger? Like, <laughs> I would never say that to anyone. But that's yeah. literally with the running commentary in my head. Like, I'm awful to myself, and we all are. Well, that we goes back to, to you know it. that point I was making about at my gigs you know, historically when that would have happened to me, and it was my frustration more so came from the fact that I would never dream of speaking to somebody like that. Mm, yeah. You know, so why why do you feel that that's acceptable? Why but it's, that? it's because to them it's a joke. Oh, I'm only joking, mate. It's like oh, great. Actually, it's not funny. Um, yeah. And it took me many many years to be able to turn around and say professionally, actually, you know, I can see the, the element of humor there. I get where you're coming from, but I, I really struggle. And, you know, that was a real defining moment for me. I remember it, somebody um, had said something to me. I won't say where, because it will give away who it was, but they'd said something to me and ordinarily they'd said something, oh, you look like you've put on weight. And I sort of walked off, not in a half, but I was actually just walking through and they said this to me and I thought, you know, I'd walked into the office next to where their room was and was like, I gotta say something. So I just walked out and said, look, I, I think you're coming from a good place by saying that, but I just want to let you know that actually the way it was said, um, actually, I think that's more damaging. So look, I know it's coming from a good place, but I'm actually finding it really tough at the minute to try and lose weight. I've been trying for a while. So I'd appreciate it if maybe, you know, 
just point out the good things you know mm. maybe notice if i've lost weight say that <laughs> that'd be really helpful because i think it's so important that he was horrified uh, that he would never have dreamt of offending me making me feel like mm. shit and and he was like i'm so sorry you know and, and and actually i knew then that the important thing was to communicate and to say to people yeah i'm struggling because actually if it's somebody that you want to hang around with they'll understand and if it's somebody that you want to hang around with they're going to understand you know what i mean and they'll be helping you on that on that um journey which is a good word that crops you. up an awful lot thank you good that was many years ago yeah but it's hard it's hard to say that stuff but yeah and I, again i think i could say that to him because i had a relationship with him i'm not sure yeah. how i how i could deal with that um without a potential uh, altercation not from my behalf but you just don't know when you're out and about mm. in public do you whether yeah. you saying that to somebody who might have said something at a bar or a pub or wherever how they're going to react um but i knew that this guy wasn't going to turn around and beat me up um, because we were at work. <laughs> so yeah, um, it was, it, we, you mentioned about BMI, by the way, and you said about the sports stars and, and you know, there are rugby players and, and it's, um, what's his name? Andrew Flintoff, uh, who, you know, regularly trains all the time. He's apparently in that obese category as well. Mm. But I, 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 having got the text, I went onto the NHS website and checked out my BMI and I was like, oh, well, it's gone down. That's good. Um, well, but that's good. it gave me... Um, the ideal weight for somebody of my, excuse me, my age, my height, and my gender, um, and it was twelve stone. And I was like, "That's okay. ridiculous." So I've got to it? lose eleven stone. You know, you can work out my weight now. Look at that. I, I was like, "But no, mine was like, right. I did mine the other day, and it said something like ludicrous, like ten stone or nine stone, just something I honestly never bit. Like my boobs alone probably weigh more than that." Like there's there's bits of me that I that I like that I don't want to get rid of, which mean I will never yeah. be ten stone. And yeah. I just I think the but also we forget that that BMI that's based on an average, isn't it? That's well, it's like also really really old. Body shape and all these other yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. It's a really old calculation as well. That so I'm led. Yeah, to we've leave. changed, haven't yeah. we, over time? And yeah, well, nah, don't BMI to that. do one. Yeah. <laughs> It Post seems stuff. like a really like we need a bit of a lift now, uh, and so I think it would be um, it would be a good opportunity for us to have some music. Um, now, yes. obviously, in our Zoom sessions, um, we are not having the performance live. So um, Yvonne is going to um, send me some audio tracks, aren't you, Yvonne? Yes, I am. Yeah, so <laughs> I can't wait. What will be the What will be the first track that we hear? Well, I, I, why am I doing this? What are we about <laughs> to hear, Yvonne? Okay, so stop this... telling the secrets to all the audience members. <laughs> So what song are we going to hear, Yvonne? Okay, so you're going to hear um, my last single, Someone Like Me. Which is a banging tune as well, by the way. Thank I've listened you. to that on YouTube. <laughs> okay, Woo! cool. So this is Von A with Someone Like Me. <laughs> One look over your shoulder, then it's over for you. If they say looks can kill, better say your prayers, kiss mama goodbye. If you open up your eyes, I'll get you hooked, mesmerized. Forget about your past, I'ma make up for the things that you lack. Did you, do you want a good girl? No drama, baby mama, or a hood girl. I give you personality. Keep you on your toes, rinse and repeat How about a stush, girl? Make my ego feel real good, girl Well, you know I got the keys I can make you war with the Hennessy I bet you never met someone like me Make you sweat, yet keep you sweet I bet you never, never I bet you never, never You know I got the remedy sugar in your tea I bet you never, never I bet you never Now we moving faster How did you get so attached? You thought that I was lying Well now boy you're really done for Cause even your mama, she loves me She said you never fall fast Sometimes you can get too complacent But I make you wanna fall flat So do you want a good girl? No drama, baby mama, or a hood girl I give you personality Keep you on your toes, rinse and repeat How about a 
stush, girl. Yeah, make my ego feel real good, girl. But you know I got the keys. I can make you old with that Hennessy. Oh, yeah. 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 I bet you never met someone like me. Make you sweat, yet yeah, keep you sweet. I bet you never, bet never. You never my worth so you stay. you stay I give it to you straight this yes, ain't no, no game no, no, no. with everything I am you should be so lucky find be. a girl just like me I bet you never I bet you never know. met someone like me make you sweat yet keep you sweet I bet you never I don't know why we're clapping because we've had we have told everybody that we're not actually listening to it right now, um, but it seems right to clap because it's a banging tune. Yeah. Someone like me by Von A. Um, thank you very much for uh, for providing us with that track, and we're going to have another one from you um, as we wrap up at the end, aren't we? Yes. What are we going to have at the end? Tell us what the so name. So you guys that. are going to hear it twice, uh, right. which was the single before, and right. it's kind of like a new Jack Swing kind of vibe. So a new maybe what, it'll sorry? just like make us dream about summer this year, and yeah. hopefully being out of lockdown. <laughs> Fingers crossed for that. Mm. Can't wait for that. I don't know about you two. I'm I'm done right. with it now. I'm I'm done. Oh, get me out! I'm so done. <laughs> so done. I don't even want to go to the pub or anything. I just want to go out. You know, <laughs> like sunshine. Just need yeah. sun. It's been glorious today as well. Oh, and I, you, you notice that around around where I live, anyway, it's been really lovely weather. Everybody's out. Everyone's like, "This is great." You know, <laughs> this is this is exactly what we need right now. Everyone's on their scooters, and you know, parents are drinking wine out on the streets. <laughs> You know, it's, it's like it's like scooters are getting out of hand. I'm I'm tired of seeing scooters. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean the electric scooters. I mean oh, the okay. scooters. <laughs> you got to remember, I'm I'm out with a two and a four year old. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought you meant the electric ones. No. because it's London. They're everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> there's one kid in my neighbourhood who's got an electric scooter. He just he just like, like he owns the place. Right. But when he's going uphill, he's screwed. Can't get anywhere, can he? And we're Unless in a valley. The, the elderly with their little cars and yeah. driving on the road like, guys come on yeah. <laughs> i know my mum has got one of those and she's she's fast she's rapid she loves oh, it serious. yeah she is and she's got this tiny little horn it's just yeah <laughs> wicked um so yeah thank you uh thank you for um uh, sending us that track to have a listen to and um, we look forward to having the, the other one at the end um yeah. now tori you mentioned you've got an ep coming out um march the 19th um mm -hmm. Did you did you say that we might be able to have a listen to that as part of the podcast as well? Or did did I? Yeah. Did I? Yeah. yeah I could send you a little little song. World so, premiere that. World premiere. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. World exclusive. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so we're, we'll add that in at the end as well, shall we? I don't quite know how to do this now. I've never had to do it Thanks. on the fly. Yeah. We, we could just do it now. <laughs> yeah. Do we have Whatever it now? Whatever you want. I want to hear from. it. I, yeah. I, would, I want to hear it now. All right. Well, we're going to have a world exclusive world premiere now of. Um, Tori Allen Martin. Is that your musical name? Yeah, just kept to the same. <laughs> just play the song. Shut Should up, have been Tom. cool like Bonnet, but I'm not that cool. <laughs> What's the name of the track you're going to send me? That's that's the question, isn't it? Oh. Climbing the wall. Climbing the wall. Yeah. I'm going to write it down. And once it's written down, that's it. Yeah, we've got to do it. Climbing the wall. I nearly gave you all four titles so that you can just edit whatever one i choose i can but edit I'll it in with climbing the wall we'll just we'll say climbing the wall climbing the wall okay cool world exclusive climbing the wall tori allen martin he said i don't love you the way that you love me 
the wall we're calling it a world exclusive world premiere tori alan martin with climbing the wall uh ep out march the 19th not done any promotion at the moment have you zero so this is the promotional <laughs> tour right here on the wedding Woo! podcast it begins um, now <laughs> it begins now and this is kind yeah. of forcing your hand a bit to to crack it on is. you've got to start yeah now, you? so thank you you're welcome yeah. you hear the full thing what's that <laughs> so i can't wait to hear the full track the full yeah. ep hey, how many tracks are there on the ep four Four tracks, okay. Yeah, it's called Half Full and there's four tracks. Very cool. All right, well, we'll look forward to it. And we having, we are having a, we are fortunate to have had a sneaky peek of it. So thank you. Um, yes. So Yvonne, your original music, um, yes. you write it or do you have co-writers? You write it? I write it, yeah, by myself. Um, I normally just work with the producer and I'm always like, have you got anything for me? Send me something to write to. Right. Or... If I just can't 
get any inspiration for, from anything I've heard. I normally just like, just play a little piano and write something and then send it off to be uh, produced. Uh, so there's like many different ways. I used to write with a guitar back in the day. Right. Haven't played in a while. Um, so I need to pick that up again. I had the whole pandemic to do that and I still haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are lots of things people haven't done during the pandemic. Okay. Which they had. Yeah. Uh, but you, so your process, it varies, I suppose, depending on, does yeah. it depend on your mood? Like, like, because for me, it's like, like you've just said, I, I, I sometimes find myself humming a melody. And that being the sort of main part of a song, maybe that I want to write. I've got so many voice notes on my phone <laughs> of things that I've just randomly thought of that I quite like, yeah. either lyrically or melodically. Uh, and or sometimes I'll just sit on the piano and just noodle around with these these chords. So, like, is it dependent on your mood? Like, what's what's your I process? Think, I think it's gotten to a point where I can just write if I need to. So if I'm going into a session with other people, I'm just like, okay, time to work. Like, you know, so. I think it's I'm more inspired by what I'm hearing and who I'm around. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't stop me from being able to write. Um, it sometimes will come out good, sometimes it won't. I, and I just accept it and I can, so you, I try again feel, later, maybe. You feel that it's better when you're bouncing off of other people? Because that's how I feel I, I work best. I think, yes. Yeah, uh, when I'm working with uh, musicians and producers, I... I tend to like get more inspiration um, because it can like do different chords and, you know, switch things up and we can start again if we have to. Um, Mm. I think it's just a very flexible way of working. Yeah. So it's, it's easier for me to kind of be inspired and to be creative. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And what about you, Tori? Because you've got this EP coming out. How do you, I mean, do you write with other people? Do you write by yourself? Yeah, I'm more of a, a top liner. So I just, it, it's all sort of like humming, just saying, and then the drums here, and then just <laughs> terrible descriptions that producers are probably like, get this girl away from me. <laughs> um, but Do yeah. You sing have, the drum parts? It, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just always like, louder. But they like, they're like, you don't mean louder. You mean. <laughs> Um, so I'm not technical at all. I'm not like you guys with that skill. Um, but my a good mate of mine, Tim Porty Jones, does production work, and he was amazing at kind of just turning them into something that made sense. Mm-hmm. And before that, I often yeah, I'd, I'd collaborate with other musicians. Um, like my mate Susanna Squires is amazing, like pianist, and she'd kind of play a piano part. And sometimes I'd record those part in the studio. We'd get the piano part down. So often I'll send sort of bare bones to Tim yeah. and then he can sort of and my mate Aaron James Williams who he works a lot with Craig David and people um do you know him Yvonne I think he's what's his name I've done stuff with Mabel um Aaron James Williams no I haven't met him no uh, yeah he does a lot of production stuff and he's the same he'll kindly sort of do bits for me and then clever people make it coherent. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not particularly technical when it comes to my musical. It, it, it tends to be a lot of it's learning by ear. You know, I've had mm. to pick up a lot of theory uh, because of my teaching. Um, mm. But I always remember doing this writing <clears throat> a long time ago. I used to have something called the Bubblegum Workshop, um, which a friend of mine and I, I used to sort of write with. And um, we went into the studio where he worked and I, and I sort of thought he was programming drums. He'd put some drums on this track and I was like, these are great, sound wicked. And um, I always remember saying, oh, and at this point I want, I want the, um, I think the drums should sound like this. And the next thing I know, this kit, like, and, and he hadn't done anything, but this kit just started going. And I didn't realize that he had his finger on the talkback button. And we had a drummer downstairs who's a oh. lifelong friend now. Al, you might have met Al, I think, Yvonne, maybe on a, a couple of gigs. Um, Al Nelson, brilliant, brilliant drummer. And he yeah. just seems to have this uh, like incredible ability to go, what do you want? And you sort of see it to him and you just go, yeah, okay, cool, like that. And it just nails it straight away. It's, it's quite a trick. So um, not that he's listening. I don't think he's listening, but Al... I love you. Thank you. You're brilliant. Um, and yeah, we're rambling now, but um, we have uh, covered a whole load of fantastic things. And obviously we've talked about our food and um, that sort of how, how we feel about our food. But what are you doing in terms of your fitness, um, Yvonne? Because I know you said, you, is it just the food that you're focusing on or are you doing something to be more active or is it just getting up and about? That's, you know, is it, is it all coming hand in hand, really? So um, I think this whole, you know, 
pandemic go out for a walk once a day thing <laughs> um I think that kind of taught me to walk <laughs> I know that sounds so weird no I, taught, I, I learned how to walk as a child but um <laughs> no um just longer walks which have really become kind of therapeutic and a form of exercise you know yeah. so I'll do like a two-hour walk a day when I feel like it <laughs> yeah I put on my Fitbit and yeah I'll go for a little two-hour walk sometimes I'll go and meet a friend halfway then walk back home that that's kind of like um motivation to like yeah. you know socially distance and say hi how are you yeah, that's Catch cool. up, yeah. you know um so that's kind of my um workout kind of thing that I'm doing at the moment I I really hate sweating so <laughs> I can't do all the you know um yoga or anything that's just very intense I used to before the lockdown I was in the gym but I just found that really stresses me out <laughs> what so stressed walking, you out about it um just just the heart rate thing and just I don't know just <laughs> getting out and bothered <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just too much for me I can't take it it's too much so I just prefer to have a nice you know long walk I wish there was a beach nearby or something would be beautiful oh, yeah. and just relaxing yeah. you know um and then yeah I focus on food a lot um obviously with Slimming World it's kind of like no fat no oil yeah so I'm still eating the same things which I really love um I'm still eating carbs yeah. um I can still have a snack if I want to every day so yeah fry light fry light's well good fry light is your best friend yeah so. I use that <laughs> Spray the crap out of that. Have a bit of fry light. Oh yep. yeah. I was a bit shocked. Fry light like butter jo- is the one. What's the fry light? What? Fry fry light like butter? No. The no. butter flavor. I'm oh. Writing it down. Didn't yeah. know it existed. <laughs> yeah. got, I thought I had every fry light. I'll add that to my, to my click and collect. <laughs> fry light butter. Sponsors of the wedding sinners podcast. <laughs> Definitely got a ring to it. Come on, fry light. Do the right thing. That's your goal. Manifest yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I'd like something more, but I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll accept fry light start butter. Start there, start small, yeah. grow. Start small, yes, grow. Um, or actually, the reverse is what I'm hoping to achieve. Yeah. I don't want to grow physically, um, <laughs> shrink physically, grow socially, podcast to be. Okay, yeah. so the walking thing for you, you you're loving that. Whereabouts yeah. do you live, Yvonne? South East London. Okay, okay, cool. So yeah. you've got some nice parks in the in the area. Uh, really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it will do. It's not the same as the lovely beach, though, is it? I, I'm, no, no. I'm lucky where I am that there's a variety of places I can yeah. go to sort of walk. And, uh, you know, like I was saying um, earlier, like when I did that walk in January, I was there was variety enough for me to, you mm-hmm. know, to do it. And what I found really enjoyable as well was um, a night walk. Um, often because of my day with the boys and a day at home working and doing all the, all the school stuff, you know, I'd often have to... Um, boys would be going to bed and then I'd jump outside and sort of go for a nice long two or three mile walk at night. Mm. And initially oh, the, the first one, I was just like, Oh, this is really quite frightening because it's in the <laughs> middle of the countryside as well. So, yeah, cool. You know, those, those fields that are completely dark, you can't, you know, that's quite, fr- I find that freaks yeah. me out a bit. Even yeah. when I'm in the car, I'm a bit like, this is scary. Um, but the more and more I did it, the more I was like, this is actually awesome. And I, and it was, a, it was quiet um it was just very peaceful it was just awesome just to walk um so yeah the night walk was really cool but you're right you know like the whole giving yourself a reason to go out for the walk like meeting your mate and stuff like that and I would I would do this thing where I'd have to walk um I'd have to walk x amount of miles before I could turn around (laughs) because then I knew that I'd have to I'd have to walk back because I I can't get a cab don't want to get a bus don't want to do all the mask (laughs) things there so i knew that i'd 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 have to do the rest so that was really cool for me as well but what about was coffee as well actually what's that mate so uh, a motivation for me was getting coffee so in second lockdown they kind of left uh cafes open ah yeah yeah. even like bars uh so if i couldn't meet a friend it would be like okay well i really want this nice coffee so i'm gonna go for a walk all the way to the next kind of i don't know 20 30 minutes away just to get coffee <laughs> yeah nice that's good though like you, yeah yeah don't go to the one that's next door you know, that's no. it. <laughs> yeah totally totally it and what about you Tori what what is it you're doing what do you do or what have you done yeah, same. Still- I'm I'm a big walker too and I and I have been for a while but yeah I I did get to I'm lucky I live um Surbiton Kingston so I'm right by the River Thames I'm near Richmond Park Nice. Kew Gardens, Bushy Park. Like I've I've got lots of nice walks, but when I tell you I have exhausted them all, I don't <laughs> want to see any of them ever again. Um, because it literally was the only thing that kept me sane in the first lockdown. I'd go for like a four-hour walk, and I'd be like, right, I'm going to go to Hampton Court today, and then I'm going to like obsessive. 
Um, so then I got to a stage where I was like, I can't walk anywhere else without a purpose. It was just pissing me off. So then now I spread things out. Like if I've got a return, I'm like, well, I'll do that one Monday. And then I'll post that letter Tuesday. I'll, I'll go and get my prescription on Wednesday. I like spread things out and then go the long way around. Um, in the first lockdown, I was doing quite a lot of workouts at home, but then I fell off. But then actually this week I've done four workouts and I did a 15,000 step walk on my fifth day so I've had quite a good week but I found my friend Sharifa um she's a big uh like mental health advocate and she's a plus size model and she's she actually we met because when I was in like the throes of my worst kind of hating my body I found I came across her on Instagram I didn't know her and she did you know back in the day we always used to do these like then and then and now pictures like look how much weight I've lost and how amazing I look she was one of the first people that did a reverse one so she showed that she'd put on weight but she was much healthier now and it was so helpful and I messaged her I never did that I never messaged people I didn't know I messaged her like thank you so much like this has really helped and we're now real life friends and it was from that um so she said to me she was like right we're gonna go on FaceTime and we're gonna do a workout together and we've done it the part we did it today and yesterday and I cannot tell you the difference it's made because normally it was a really sweaty, like Les Mills. And honestly, I would have given up five minutes in. I would have been like, no, this is too much. <laughs> but having your mate there to hold yeah. you accountable, it's been the most helpful thing for me. It's a game changer. And I got through the but I was doing a boxing one today. And um, I really, again, half an hour in, I was like, I d- I, no, I want to turn it off. And I stood there for quite a while and she didn't stop. And I was like, shit I'm gonna have to do it and then if she sat on the edge of her sofa like, <laughs> and I'm going she's like right and she's back up so I'd really recommend it if you struggle with motivation yeah. get a partner who's gonna hold yeah. you accountable and that's I'm so glad I did it so that's that's our new thing and we're back on Monday for more that's cool that could yeah. be on oh, that could, you could do a podcast whilst doing it maybe with, with your burn bright thing yeah maybe would <laughs> sound uh, a bit funny like <laughs> so, so how do you <laughs> I would, I would listen to it because yeah. <laughs> why not? I, I mean, um, it'd be niche. It'd be a new market. It would be niche. Yeah, <laughs> let's try and open up that market. Why not? Let's I do think it. I, my um, the guy I did the walking with, uh, he and I both have an Apple Watch, and it was a long while into having it that I realised that we we could compete, and you could do this <laughs> thing where you basically like you invite them to compete with your movement and everything. So he and I would compete. Uh, I won uh, every time, uh, but it basically that was brilliant because suddenly like i've got i've got to beat billy i've got to beat him it keeps you, know, you and going I, doesn't absolutely. it absolutely and it, like even when we and, and i think therefore the sort of the our relationship um went from you know being mates close mates but it also then it became a bit more we were competitors um and you know with the with the walking thing as well you know it was great having him doing it because there were times when at night i'd just put the boys to bed it had been a hectic day you know, I just wanted to do that. I wanted to make that yeah. noise. I wanted to flop onto the sofa and just be like, right, cool. I'll go to bed an hour and do it all over again. But knowing that Bill had put the miles in, uh, you know, he doesn't have kids, uh, and, you know, and he works he works from home, but I knew that he'd done the miles because I saw it in my watch pop up. I was like, oh, shit, I've got to go out. I've got to do it. You know, Bill's done it, so I've got to do it as well. So definitely, definitely having that other person there um, makes a real change, doesn't it? it? Makes a real difference yeah, to the whole it just thing. Just holds you accountable, doesn't yeah. it? A bit more, and I think we need that, especially in these. And times. it's enjoyable. It's so easy and, to not do it. Yeah, and it's enjoyable, and you laugh about those. I think what's yeah. really important is that you those moments where, you, when, if you'd been doing it on your own, those moments where you'd have been like, no, don't want to do it, giving up. Actually, that becomes almost like a humorous thing, you know. And you, you know, you and your mate are sort of like, oh, don't be a you know, silly ass, just crack on with it. You can, you can yeah. do it. It changed the whole the whole mentality around it. So yeah, it does. And and you're you're enjoying it. That, yeah, that, I'm I never told thought is, I'd that, say that. No. but that's, that's the, the thing with exercise, thing, isn't it? Isn't it? Remain, I remind it. Rem, I can't speak. It reminded me today. Like it's that first five ten minutes is horrible. Yeah. But then it's at that like the 15, 20 minute mark that the endorphins kick in and you yeah. feel lovely. Yeah. But I I rarely get to that bit because I'm like, oh, I've done fifteen minutes. That's fine. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm I'm I do not hold myself accountable enough. So it's yeah. It was I actually halfway through I was like, remember this because. Mm-hmm. You're sweaty and look a state, but you feel great. Yeah, you feel good. So I, it, and it's also, I guess, it's taught me now that I can go for longer than I, than I thought. We did 45 yeah. minutes today, and I, it was hard, mm. and I would have said I couldn't have done it, but now I'm like, oh, I can. But I needed my mate there to help me. Yeah, help so me I'd the recommend way. it. 
bit of healthy competition. Definitely. That's important. The whole boxing thing for me came about because I was wanting to trick myself into losing weight and to sort of getting fitter because it's Mm. something you have to really learn. Um, And I love it. And I would recommend it to anybody. I've not gone into the boxing training with any dream of stepping into the ring because lord look at this face i don't want to ruin it um why would i but it it was you know it's it's a really good thing to sort of let out that aggression that might be pent up but it is such a it's such an art and again doing it with a mate um you know who teaches me uh, and he who was an xboxer as well and he just gets gets me so that helps as well so Mm. boxing's the one for me boxing and doing weights you can feel the gains with a z yes Mm, you can um so I want to talk about pandemonium um, because we chatted on the phone the other day, Tori, and we were sort of chatting about what, what you've been doing and what you've done. And you, you brought up pandemonium as being something that um, you were part of in lockdown too. And it sort of rang alarm bells in the, in my head of, of <laughs> along the lines of oh, that's one, that's the program that I've got on my list on the BBC <laughs> iPlayer. So I, I need to sit down and watch it. And I sat down and watched pandemonium and it is brilliant. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Mm. So I know with you haven't watched it. Um, not yet. I'm going not to. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. And I would thoroughly encourage anybody who uh, has a sense of humour to watch it as well because it's hilarious. <laughs> and I think what was really cool about it as well, were the, because it was all filmed in lockdown and oh. I presume uh, under the conditions that we were all living at the time, you know, you had uh-huh. to do things a bit different. Um, yeah. There were so many things within it that I was like, wow, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, you know, things that um, really stood out that, that you were having to do at home. So it made it very, very real. So what's yeah. the situation with that? Because it was only a one episode thing, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a pilot episode. um, And they let, there was a bit of a, they they did leave it um, sort of hanging at the end as well, didn't they? Um, Yes, open for more. It's been very well received and we're hopeful for more. And that's all I will say. (laughs) Very well received (laughs) sounds pretty good though, doesn't it? What do you reckon, Yvonne? I reckon there'd be another one. Let's hope so anyway. Yeah, and um, and Alison. Let's hope so because I need a job. (laughs) (laughs) I agree. And Alison Stedman, she's a, she's a, absolute genius isn't she she's a g yeah when i the producer called me just after i'd um got it because they they needed some pictures of me with a hunky man because there's this whole story <laughs> she's like what? this is a really weird call tori but do you have any pictures of you with fit men and i was like let me see in the vault um but uh he told me that he said do you know who's in it and i was like no and my mum had read the lines with me you know coming over and locked she's my bubble she came over and locked down and did the lines and as she read them she was like i could see alison stedman on this couldn't you right and then he said to me oh yeah so we've got and alison stedman and i was like oh. and then i told my mum she was like i played alison stedman she was so <laughs> happy um but yeah she's the one for me you know you just have some people like on your bucket list like I yeah I just I really admire her and um so I was quite no I was quite nervous you know they say never meet your idols don't they but um luckily she was lovely and hilarious she's just constantly like doing different characters and she's super fun to be around um but the whole cast were they it was the nicest bunch of people and Tom Basden who wrote it played my plays my partner in it and he's just everyone was just brilliant and it's a a lot of uh like Catherine and Jim who are in it are writers as well so there was a lot of fun sort of banter and messing around and I write so it was it was really nice and Ella Jones our director was so great at letting us kind of play yeah which also in lockdown when you've not seen anyone say, but we've all been, been COVID tested yeah, yeah so yeah. we could be like a bubble we were like kids in a store like it was so <laughs> exciting we'd just been let out yeah. you know what I mean yeah, yeah, totally. so we like, <laughs> um but yeah it was great I had a lovely time well I'm looking forward to maybe another one fingers crossed and for anyone yeah. not sure who Alison Steadman is get life and um she's uh she's in Gavin and Stacey right yeah I, I Pam, just if you suddenly Pam had a Stacey. pardon Pam maybe in Gavin and Stacey. Yes. I think she's Pam Yeah, and she was she? in a show called The Life or something recently that I was obsessed with. That was mm. another one. If you're bored in lockdown, it's she, good. She's great. And I, I've really yeah. thoroughly enjoyed it. So anybody listening, if you haven't checked it out, do so. It's only half Thank hour you. long and it's just it's just doodles of fun. So uh, go for it. Why not? Um, right, <laughs> Yvonne. So like your your music plans been restricted somewhat i think it's fair to say uh we don't dwell on that too much um if we can avoid it we all know the situation that musicians and creatives are in at the moment but um how did it how did sort of covid hit your plans i mean did you have tours did you have shows booked i know you would have had shows booked for your um for your bv's work but what about for your original stuff 
So my original stuff, um, I had just released an EP. It was called Think Twice, um, December 2019. And then- That's right. I've got that written down. So you're right. (laughs) And so obviously that would have been like, you know, gigging the songs and promoting it. And I really missed out on that whole like live performance promotion part, Mm. which is a shame. Um, so that kind of affected things for me. Um, and I had a lot of like festivals booked in with Kano um, over the summer that got cancelled. Well, they got rescheduled to to this year. Oops. <laughs> uh, to this year. And then I guess we're still kind of, well, we know it's not going to happen. So, yeah, it's kind of, I think next year things yeah. will kind of, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, but I mean, like, you just have to kind of, be hopeful and that you can do things in other ways so like this new single that I'm uh that I'm going to release I'm focusing more on like the online platform and how you know stuff like TikTok is go has gone crazy since last year and how I can promote things online and just you know um playlisting radio radio is still happening in terms of yeah um interviews are at home now um mm. through zoomed like this uh yeah, so there's there are ways that you can still do it. So I'm I'm not like giving up hope yeah. that you know I can't do anything this year. And to be honest, I could, I'll probably save money, you know, yeah. <laughs> which will help for next year. Yeah, to yeah. I, I love the fact out. That, that it out of such um, such a crappy time. Uh, that's you know it's it's um I think it's the real sign of creative like creatives who who have actually gone okay I can't do what I normally do so mm. this is what I'm going to do now instead you know yeah. how that whole online gig thing you know it's just taken off and you know, was it watching the Graham Norton thing last night where you know they're, they're talking about they're not talking about tours as we know them they're talking about mm. oh yeah well, I'm doing these online events that are running mm. from you know and now that's a whole different sort of subcategory of that industry so mm. if anything out of all this shite um hopefully there'll be even more opportunities for yes. for performance and for people to perform as well so um I'm looking forward to hearing in your your single you, you're Thank not sure you. when that's coming out yet but it's soon very soon very soon mm. Just, yeah okay but you're going to put it on our instagram share it and we'll share it and then I will. some people Thank will you. hear it as well <laughs> um listen we're going to wrap things up now um we've we've cover the awful lot it's been an absolute uh, pleasure to chat to you both um been really nice to catch up with you Yvonne and obviously to meet you Tori as well uh, for the you first time it's, it's felt really cool both. just to chat um yeah. and we're gonna wrap things up with another song of yours Yvonne so what's the Woo! um what's the final song <laughs> we're gonna have okay so you are gonna hear my single twice looking forward to it thank you both thank you. ever so much uh, this is Vonne with twice Before you change your mind, you change your mind. You should think twice. Try to 
gon' be me next time, girl. 